How do y'all freeze cracked here? Hey, uh, <coughs> got a flake here. I think um, I'm going to go over a, a few things about notching again. A little different concepts maybe. I saw uh, more discussion about people having a problem with notching. And there's two ways that I do it. And actually, like, there's three or more ways. But um, with thin stuff, a lot of times I'll just notch it with pressure. And if I'm going to get into a thicker thing, like I've got some that I haven't thinned out enough, I um, sometimes will punch it. And I actually sometimes mix the two up. Um, but one of the things that I'll do when I go with my initial pressure is if I know I'm going to have a problem with thinning because it isn't as thin as it ought to be I will actually try and push my initial flake ahead of me um, to do a little thinning and I'll do that on the other side too but then this is a, a little steel tip and I've talked about that kind of thing before this is a, uh, a skirting spike for mobile homes Got it from Mobile Home Supply. Stupid planes are going over, so to bear with me on that. I just blew out a piece of it. This is a real thin thing. The cool thing about notching practicing on flakes is you don't like it, throw it down and find another one. This one's good for practicing because it gets thick quickly. So you're you're notching into thickness. And it's good for a couple of reasons. Number one, it teaches you how to notch into thickness. But number two, it teaches you what level of thickness you can go into before it just ain't gonna work for you. So I pushed a flake ahead of me. And I'm gonna clean it out and square it off. I always square them off in the, in the bottom. The reason is I don't want to be pushing in on something where there's any lateral pressure. So push that ahead of me a little bit to do a little bit of thinning ahead of me. And then I'm going to switch to the thinner steel. And I push that like a half inch ahead of me to thin. Don't keep going too much on one thing because if you get it too stiff, if it's not a real soft rock, you'll, uh, you'll get it too strong and then when you try and take your next flake, you round it off and then you'll be stuck. Um, I do use soft leather sometimes. It seems to help would not shock in the piece kind of hang the ears off a little bit but see that pushed it because I've got that bevel on there and I'm pushed in and down that pushed it about a half inch ahead and did some thinning um, and it can make a big difference I mean if you're trying to you're trying to make, say, a Calf Creek or an Andice or something, and you want your notches a certain length, well, you know, thinning ahead of yourself, if you didn't get it thin enough to start with, might be the, the difference between making the point you want and not. <clears throat> so you can see, I mean, I'm going up into well over, it's going to end up going up into well over half an inch and thick or whatever and I'm not going to be able to do it. The other thing is, um, you see how I'm coming up from underneath. I'm not touching these things, these ears at all. If you want to, to make it a little bit less risky, you can take a flake or something, a thin flake or something like that, 
and you can go in once you get your initial stuff done you can kind of burnish or buff the outer edges of those ears try and get the total knife edge off of it uh, so it's not as bad a knife edge and that's a little bit helpful um, in keeping it from breaking on you okay so this is a a copper nail that's been flattened out sort of rounded off and so it's got little shoulder type things and basically I just put the shoulder on it and that creates a, a bevel kind of and just hit it pops out a little C cone and sometimes I'll take and just push you know, once I do the center push, I'll, round, I'll square the corners out and do that a couple times and flip it. That's a big cone there. You don't necessarily want to do what I'm doing here, but with so much uh, force, it all depends on what kind of rock you're using. This is uh, raw Georgetown. So... You know, I can do some pretty, and it's thick, and you know, and it's wide here. I don't have a narrow little ear. Um, and what I would tell you is I normally don't work where I have a narrow little ear. What I do is I try and, and keep the edges fairly wide. I preform the thing down to where I don't think I'll have to do anything horribly shocky afterwards. It's just starting to stall. So you have that depth where it starts getting thick and it's kind of stalled in the middle. Once it's in the middle like that, you only have two choices. One thing you can do is you can take pressure and come in and nibble away at a side, keeping it sharp and creating a sharp edge down at one corner, and then try and take a flake in that corner and then like zigzag the middle of the thing to get back your, your sharp edge. But <clears throat> otherwise you'd have to take a diamond file or something and just file the crap out of it at a bevel to recreate your platform lower because when it stalls in the middle and it's rounded off, most anything you tend to do is going to be putting too much bending forces on it. Not working. So we're gonna get that down. Here's another one I was working on before I turned it on just to make sure I didn't look too sucky. You know initially your most dangerous thing is when you take that first little nibble and I like to do that with pressure not not percussion like I just did it because and I try and get it like two two micro flakes wide, two little flakes wide because uh, you know until you get in a flake or two away from that edge you're at risk of taking off a corner of it and since these flakes are curved you know and and they're like almost plano convex this is not really a great simulation because flaking one direction is a lot easier than flaking the other on this shape. But I'm trying to give you some ideas here. I know that it's frustrating to when you really got the hots to uh, flint nap. It's kind of frustrating to take time out from making points to practice notching on flakes but what I have seen is there's a small percentage of flint nappers very small that are great uh, notchers and everybody else is just kind of worries about notching and puts their their work pieces at risk every time they do it because they haven't done it enough.
Now you can punch, you know, straight down if you don't need to thin in front of yourself. You can kind of, there's, there's some online stuff there that's kind of interesting. There's some different techniques that I've seen in other people's videos online and I won't go over all that stuff with you because you can find it easy. Just get on Google and and search like punch notching or notching an arrowhead or whatever and you'll find some some hits on that stuff where some people have some pretty clever and innovative ways of doing it. Um, When I'm, when I'm pushing down, I'm doing two things. I'm raising the edge. I need the edge above, below the center line when I flip it. And then I'm stiffening the edge a little bit, but not a lot. And one wrong hit or one hit that doesn't take a flake can be the one that rounds it off. You have to be careful. This is rounding now. So that's stalled now too. I don't know if it'll do anything going the opposite direction, but probably not. You probably want to dress your tools fairly often too. And notice these things are stalling and actually I'm not sure if the middle one stalled, but they're stalling in about the same depth. Um, that's a key, that's a clue. Um, with this particular technique, with this punch and this striker and everything like that, um, that's about the depth, the thickness that gets me in trouble. Um, so you just sort of memorize that and try not to go try not to go deeper and thicker than that. And if you have done your preform and it's thicker than that, guess what? It's not safe to notch it. So don't. That's the thing that a lot of people kind of forget, or not forget, but don't take it into consideration. You know, you, you take risk with your napping every day with hitting some things, you know, that are eh, just a little bit sketchy and that kind of stuff. And I do that all the time. You can't do it with notching because, you know, there's no, there's no do-over. I mean, yeah, you can try and remake the point into something else or something smaller or whatever, but it's not like you can fix the bad flake when you blow an ear off. But I think another thing about notching on flakes it does is it kind of gives people more confidence to experiment in ways that they would not on their on their real points, like for instance, hitting harder, uh, more rapidly, you know, popping that little sucker and seeing what happens. Um, and I think for a lot of people, what they will find there is that they're actually safer and better at not breaking their points when they do take a little faster, harder rep than what they thought was okay. Because the energy transfer needs to be fairly quick to make sure to initiate that flake before the um, before the ear has time to break off shock the whole piece you know you shock the whole piece and a lot of times uh, the ear is what gives so if you initiate your flake good then you don't necessarily shock the whole piece um, what I was going to say though, I have a tendency nowadays to, to use my indirect uh, a lot of times and I can get away with a lot with the indirect as far as my angles driving stuff inward because I can get the angles really right with it. So therefore, I can take 
and leave the ears and not just with the indirect but also with my pressure flake and I know the angles almost straight in angles that are safe so what I can do and what I recommend you try and do is consider unless you've got a great artist eye and you can do a perfect long hand ice notch exactly straight and everything like you want it to be symmetrical with the other one and everything the safer and preferable thing is what I do is I finish the base first I'll bring the ears in maybe uh, you know a eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch or something wider and all the way up the edge to the point wider than and the point, you know, I can keep that real wide and thick if I want to. It doesn't matter. I don't have to finish the point. Um, but I'll get the ears, I'll get the base lined up like I want it because I don't really want to change the base. I'll get that thin and straight and all that kind of stuff. But I'll leave the ear area wider so that when I'm notching, I'm not really notching with a thin ear hanging off the side to get broken easily. And I don't have to worry as much about going perfectly straight with it um, because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my notches in there. And then when I get my notches in there, I'll just uh, finish the I'll just finish the edges carefully. And I really don't have a problem with it. I mean, I don't. I'm not saying that you won't necessarily but I don't have a problem with breaking the ears trying to thin them after I've notched I, I have figured out how to do that and that's a lot easier than notching so All right, now I did do another uh, notching video before where I was using a little bitty punch and of course that has worked for me too and there's times when you don't necessarily want to do a big notch, a big wide notch. I think on a lot of the original old points, you know, Andes, Andes, Cat Creek stuff, a fairly wide notch is legit because, you know, they, they had organic punches and they didn't always make tiny, tiny everything's for deep notches because they didn't need to. I mean, what's the point in having a, a real thin little notch on a big knife of some kind? Um, don't need it. If you're wondering why that notch is so much deeper and why I haven't stalled out, well, it, it's because this is, area was thinner and, it, and it's just now getting about the thickness of this other stuff. And plus this other stuff had a little bit more chalkiness in it and a little more crushy. Um, so the, the character of the flint matters quite a bit too. All right, so how many minutes have I spent? All right, 10 minutes. Is that 10 minutes or is that 18 minutes? Crap. <clears throat> well, whatever. I've uh, actually done a one video video this time, and I just want to talk to you a little bit about notching, but, but try that. Try that, because if you do it enough, you're going to get good at it, and if you get good at it, you'll never worry about notching again. All right, bye for now. Freeze crack.